Pharma Ventures, experts in deals and alliances. Hello and welcome to Pharma Ventures Insights here in London. Venture capital is a key component of startups and developing companies and they rely very heavily upon their funding. One such company that's been in, in this area for quite some time is Index Ventures and more recently a spin-out Medici Ventures has come from that to invest in the, in the healthcare and biotech sector. Joining me today is John Edwards of Medici. John, welcome to the show. Thanks for having me. Um, so I mentioned a couple of names there, um, Index and Medici. Perhaps you that's could correct. talk a little bit about what the connection is. Sure. So um, as many people probably know in the UK, Index Ventures is a, uh, was a venture capital firm that, that had its roots in both investing in technology as well as biotechnology. Uh, we started investing around 1996. Uh, throughout the course of that, the biotechnology um, aspect of that business began to grow and, and become a little more independent than, uh, than what it was at the beginning. It was a little bit nascent, I would say. Over the course of investing in a variety of different companies and building some strategic relationships with pharmaceutical companies such as GSK and J and J, we were able to raise our own standalone uh, standalone fund, which wasn't part of that existing structure, which was a hybrid model, which was termed IL Six. That fund was uh, raised with GSK and J and J. Uh, they were about 50% of the LP capital. The other 50% was from our traditional financial investors, and that fund allowed us to really f uh, exclusive exclusively focus on biotech investments inside of the index mothership. Um, as those funds began to progress and we had some successful exits, um, the fund did pretty well. We decided that it made sense strategically to, to start to separate the funds out. Um, we still have a great relationship with index, but as, the, as they both became kind of independent, as you know, there's very different timelines in uh, technology versus biotechnology investments, uh, different things you need to consider we made the decision to, to separate the funds uh, and to allow each of us to go our own ways. And so is the focus of index technology and Medici is, is biotech? Is that the, the differentiator? That's correct, exactly. So Medici, we basically spun out the life science team that was inside of Index Ventures, created Medici, and now we're focused exclusively on therapeutic investing. And so some of the, the early therapeutics investments that Index did, did they move across or did they, what happened to them? Great question. Yeah, so we're still managing uh, the old portfolio uh, for Index Ventures. Uh, we have a relationship, as I said, it's still positive. It's, uh, you know, very collaborative. And the plan is that once we've exited and finished off with those funds, we'll be standalone and, and be responsible for all of our own investments. Right. And GSK and J&J &J were involved in that IL-6 fund that you Correct. talked about. It's an oft-asked question that, well, when you get big pharma involved in this, have they got some vested interest? And does it, if, if they don't take the assets that come out of that or the, the investments into their own yep. mothership, does that taint them in some way? You've been doing this since 96, so yeah. you guys would have a great view on, on how that plays out. What, exactly. What I mean, a lot of people ask us that question, right? Especially because Johnson & Johnson, GSK, also have their own mm -hmm. investment funds, right? The SR1 and the JJDC, and they're looking at other investments. So why would they work with us to, to do this? Um, I think the main answer to that is we give them, you know, diversity and a breadth uh, that they don't normally get through their own investment arms. We have no strategic area of focus that we have to look at. We can look at any indications, any technology, um, and we can be outside of their areas of interest. Um, what they get from it is getting to see new opportunities that maybe they wouldn't come across otherwise. Um, we have a very specific investment model which we call asset centricity. Mm -hmm. So a high degree of focus on the single assets, capital efficiency, um, and we really are a team of experts in, in drug development. Okay, so let's, let's move a little to the, uh, the Medici fund, or Medici entity yeah. as it is now and the funds you have there. Um, it, what, what's the focus of that? Is, is it an early stage, late stage, development? What, 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 what do you do? So when we announced the spin out of Medici, that was last year in February, um, and we announced that alongside a new fund that we had raised for early stage investments, mm -hmm. following basically the same model that we had implemented at Index. So this was with GSK and J&J. &J. Um, it was a 210 million euro fund, and that's focused exclusively on preclinical concept up to about phase 1B uh, development projects. Um, and then subsequently to that, this year we've announced that we've raised another fund with Novartis and uh, Verily, which is to help support kind of uh, the more mature companies in Europe uh, that may have typically had to have gone to the U.S. or done a deal that, the, that 
you know, might not have been beneficial to that company at that point in time, so that we can come in and support later stage development and allow them to continue their efforts where that ca capital might not have been available. So can you follow your money all the way through now with the... the so the strategy, sort of that's a good question. So the, the funds are supposed to be independent. Mm -hmm. We do have a mechanism in place that if we wanted to, we could follow on, but it really it's, you know, early stage investments with one fund, later stage investments with the other fund, separate opportunities. Are you investing at the same sort of level as U.S. funds, or is it more like the European who tend to invest smaller amounts more frequently? So with um, you know, the early stage fund, given our approach being asset centricity, uh, we really try to deploy small amounts of capital early on to de-risk the science, allow mm -hmm. us to really get a sense if this is something real, something worth investing into a proper Series A, bringing in a syndicate and, and finishing out that development. With a later stage fund, obviously those are going to be much larger uh, investment sizes. So anywhere 20 to 30 million per company to really allow them to develop. So I guess I could say it's somewhat similar to, to U.S. later stage investors in that sense. What about the early stage fund? Have you exited from any of those yet? So the early stage fund we only announced last year. So we're still okay. in, the, in the active investor mode. Um, you know, we've made, say, about 10 investments now, uh, you know, primarily Europe. We've got a couple investments in the U.S. as well. Uh, we're quite excited about a few of those. In terms of the IL-6 fund, the fund that was um, held with Inside Index Ventures, we've had uh, one exit, X01, which people might be aware of. Uh, it was actually sold to J&J. To &J. Mm -hmm. uh, they had some strategic interest in the space, and it was you know, a very, very successful exit for us and really helped prove and validate this asset-centric model. Okay. Uh, you mentioned J&J &J there, and they've been very vocal and very public about um, their incubator and J Labs and, yeah. and how they're doing that thing. And others are copying that model and uh, giving people free laboratory space and free mentoring. How, how do VCs sort of knit into that model or, or do you? Do you, do, do you get involved in that at all? You mean in terms of us uh, implementing that internally or well, well, in interacting with JJBC yeah, interacting the J Interacting with Labs. that because they're, they're building a, a, um, an environment in which entrepreneurs can yeah. go and bring their ideas to fruition and giving them lots of free stuff. Yep. Now, obviously, they say there's no strings attached, but yep. I think nobody is naive enough to believe that they're doing it as a way of getting exposure to things that are interesting and will mm -hmm. pick up on the interesting things. Do you participate in, do you get a view of the things that are going to there? Do you get to invest in them? And yeah. The winners too? Yeah, I mean, you know, it all depends on the specific company, right? So if there's a company that's been incubated in the J Labs and they're going out fundraising and looking for a syndicate, obviously we'd love to take a look at that. We do take a look at those types of opportunities. Um, you know, I don't know if you're getting at is there any downsides or negatives associated there with that with that model or I, I was just interested to know okay. if, if you can get involved in it or whether yeah. this is an attempt by pharma companies to kind of do their own thing and not be dependent upon v VC funding? So I think much? that there are a lot of pharmaceutical companies that are, um, you know, attempting to get more involved in innovation in the early stage. There's a mm -hmm. lot of interest in identifying new early stage targets given the scarcity. Um, so obviously, you know, if there's something that's super hot inside the J Labs, I would find it hard to believe that it would get out from mm -hmm. underneath there, right? They might want to keep control of that or invest in that themselves. Um, but, you know, we do look at, at products that have been incubated and that are in accelerators and different things like that. And it's, it's off, often a criticism, uh, whether it's fair or not is another matter, that um, VCs tend to fund, fund things that pharmaceutical companies like and pharmaceutical companies tend to like things that they like. And so yeah. doing new and novel and very innovative things, it's hard to get them funded and hard to get the attention of farmers. Is that still the case or, or uh, VCs and you guys in particular being much more sort of creative in what you're doing? Yeah, I mean, I think that's a fair point, right? There is kind of this chicken and the egg of how do you identify something that's new and innovative but yet still has potential in the future. I think one of the areas that we're particularly strong at is our relationships with pharmaceutical companies. We've got the strategic relationships uh, plus deep relationships with other pharmaceutical companies that aren't directly invested in us. And we use that as a lens to kind of get a sense or a feel or a pulse of the industry in terms of where it might be heading, right? As a VC, we can't be investing in something that's really hot today because in five, 10 years, that might not be so interesting to a pharmaceutical company. So I think that's one of our jobs is to really start to identify and have a sense for where the industry might be moving, what could potentially be interesting in the future and where those big unmet needs are. I think the number one rule is if you keep patients first and the unmet needs first, you typically tend to find the interesting areas. And so the, the obvious question is, where is the industry heading from your perspective and, and where should people be placing their bets? Well, that's a good question. Um, you know, we we exclusively focus on therapeutics. I think there's a lot of areas that have been 
more challenging in the past to, or currently to invest in one area that obviously lots of people know about and think is very hot is immune oncology for say. However, it becomes um, a difficult scenario when you're trying to think about how do you pick the right target in that space? What's going to be the right combination? How are things going to be moving forward there? Um, in terms of areas with, you know, where we should be investing in the future, I guess, you know, it's hard for me to pick out specific indications, right? We look at across all therapeutic areas and all technologies. Uh, what we're really, what really gets us excited, I can tell you, is you know strong genetic validation, maybe some human evidence around therapeutic areas that are starting to show some promise, um, as well as you know maybe new biology that becomes discovered. Um, albeit when you discover new biology, it has these inherent risks of it's unproven. So how do you how do you get comfortable with that? And we try to use a variety of different inputs to to see if we feel it's a good bet or not. And a slightly different twist on that is we we see a lot more sort of drug device combinations. We see a lot of, in the new technology space, wearable things, um, mm. connected devices, the graying of, of healthcare and lifestyle. Do you think ultimately you'll end up with funds that, that invest in those areas? That's an interesting question. Um, you know, obviously now that we've got this new relationship with Verily and Google, um, you know, you could see maybe something in the future coming out of that. Currently, we don't invest in that area primarily because it's not our backgrounds and our expertise. We're you know, a group of drug developers with, with those specific skill sets. Now, if you ask me personally, if I believe that there will be trends moving in that way, yes, I think that there will be some interesting um, you know, combinations in terms of devices, new technologies, ways to improve healthcare outcomes that in the future we could potentially be looking at. Uh, and just finally, the, the, the future for Medici, is it mm. more of the same? You raise more funds, you invest in wider areas or different areas, or wh where do you see it going? Yeah, I mean, it's a really exciting time for the company. Uh, you know, you don't often have a new spin out with kind of these old roots. And as you know, we've raised two funds. We've got a lot of capital to deploy. Uh, we're currently really focused on just doing the best we can with these funds, identifying the best therapeutic opportunities in Europe, um, and really supporting those companies so that we can continue to have this uh, vibrant Euro European and uh, UK biotech ecosystem. What the future holds, uh, I think, depends on a lot of how these funds do. Uh, we're very prom we feel very um, you know, good about where we're headed, and I do think that there will be some significant expansion in the future. Well, John, that's been some great insight into Medici and the VC world in general. So many thanks for joining us great. today. Great. Thanks. thanks for having me. For more information about Pharma Ventures, visit our website.